That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Hunted, uh, the latest film, well, I think the first solo live action film directed by Vincent Paranog, uh, which premiered at the 2020 Fantasia Film Festival and will be released on Shudder January 14th, 2021. This was a very interesting film. Mm -hmm. um, the you so this person's done other things that were like animation. Vincent Perrin, he yeah he's a French uh, comic artist, film director, but he's probably best known for two films that he co-directed with Marjan Satrapi uh, over a decade ago. 2007's Persepolis was a huge, uh, big uh, that was a huge film, uh, and then the follow-up was Chicken with Plums in 2011, which was hybrid. Um, and he he has directed a solo film before that. I'm I don't think that's animated, but this in several sources has been credited as like his live action. Okay. Well, the basic story, it's set in modern times somewhere in Europe, like generic location. It was shot in Belgium, but it's unspecified. It focuses on a woman named Eve. Mm -hmm. Eve is like, it appears she's on a business trip somewhere, staying at a hotel. She's in a relationship with someone named Alex, I think. That's mm -hmm. who's calling her phone. But uh, it would appear things aren't going well because she ignores several of his phone calls. She's in her hotel when she decides to take a walk without her phone, which is important. She takes a walk and stumbles into a nightclub <laughs> mm -hmm. where she is approached by a gentleman uh, who is credited as the handsome man. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she takes a liking to him. They go back to his car and start making out in the back seat. And while they're making out, another man jumps in the front seat, starts the car and take off. Mm -hmm. So this bitch has been kidnapped. Mm -hmm. So she's begging and pleading, like, please let me out. They do let her out at a gas station. So she runs in. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. She runs in and asks to use a phone to call a cab. And the convenience store employee says, you won't get a cab at this hour. However, I'm off in 20 minutes. I can take you into the city. Great. Thanks. While she's waiting, the handsome man and his accomplice return to the gas station. They go in, the handsome one kills, or he kills the convenience store worker and throws Eve in the trunk. So now they're off. Mm -hmm. And it's clear they are going to sexually assault her and videotape it. Yeah. So while they're making their way to location B, they hit an animal in the middle of the road and flip the car. Mm -hmm. Everyone's injured, but they're all able to get out. She's attempting to escape. So what happens first is the accomplice is kind of this like Weasley little guy who doesn't seem like a hundred percent in on like kidnapping and sexually assaulting women. So the handsome one is not pleased and he ends up killing him. So now it's just the handsome one searching for Eve. However, the film opens with an older woman recounting a story by campfire to her grand, her young grandson. Like a fairy tale. Like a like fairy, fairy tale. tale. And there's, there's some animation in there. There's some animals. animation, which actually looked pretty cool. Yeah. But it's about Nicodemus and his tribe wandering the forest when they come upon a woman and they are going to eat her when she ple begs and pleads for, uh, for, for them not to do so. They are going to do it and she screams to the heavens and it appears like Mother Nature responds by having animals like protect her. Mm -hmm. So that's how the film opens. So now that Eve and... The well, and she very cryptically says there might not be wolves anymore, but there are still men. Yes. So now that Eve is in the woods and the handsome one's chasing her, the handsome one comes across that same old woman, but now it's like in the future because her grandson's older. Yeah, her grandson is credited as 15 years old in the credit. 15 now. years old. But some things happened before that the accomplice is murdered. I said that. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, and, okay. That's it. So, the handsome one approaches the grandma and the grandson and tells some lies. The grandma's hip to his game, but before she can do anything, he <laughs> takes an arrow and like jams it in her ear. So she's incapacitated. We assume she's dead. And he recruits the grandson to help him like trap Eve. They're successful. Eve is tied up. And he, right before, he instructs the young boy to put on a mask and sexually assault Eve. He doesn't want to. Right before the man is about to attack one or both of them, 
Eve is able to get a hold of a knife and she's trying to cut herself loose, but the handsome guy, uh, she screams out for help, not unlike the story in the beginning of the film, and all of a sudden a crow appears and attacks the handsome one. He's able to get it away, and he's going to use a stun gun, which he has used previously on Eve, mm -hmm. to stun her again. But he misses her and hits the grandma who's like on the floor with the arrow through her ear, and he resuscitates her. <laughs> so she gets up like a zombie, which obviously freaks him out. So Eve is able to escape. But the table has turned now. Eve is like, first of all, her appearance has changed. Her hair is like wild and crazy, like frizzy. She is now chasing the handsome one. Mm -hmm. Like she's gonna kill him. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a cat and mouse thing reversed because she is chasing him through a cornfield. While that's happening, the grandson is able to shoot a bow into um, the handsome one's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Things take a turn, though, when they leave the forest and enter the city. Well, they, they come across a uh, development, a, like a construction like a suburban site. development site that some of the constructed houses are being shown and by. There's a security officer who the handsome one convinces that Eve is going to assault him. So basically he maces her he maces her and then the handsome one kid like harms the security officer yeah he doesn't kill him so eve runs into like a condo that's being shown by a real estate agent which is a really good scene because mm -hmm. the handsome one follows her in there and they have a showdown mm -hmm. the film ends with because he has the upper hand and it appears he's going to kill her when a the security guard's dog which looks like a wolf, but mm -hmm. it's probably like a German Shepherd, mm -hmm. like escapes from the van and runs into the, like the Congo and attacks the handsome one. Mm -hmm. And then Eve is able to overcome him, the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this film was crazy. It is not what I thought it would be at all. Yeah. Even from the trailer, I thought it was just gonna be like some lady in the woods being stalked by some crazy guys. Well, it's like a grisly fairy tale, yeah. uh, survival slash slasher film. I thought it was very effective. I couldn't get the song b because it's kind of playing with some Little Red Riding Hood tropes, at least a little bit. Uh, that Sam the Sham and the Pharaoh song mm. little red <laughs> from the 60s, because um, I kept singing that throughout. Uh, but there's some really like quirky moments. Well, it also, everybody's speaking English, uh, but in very varying accents, which kind of gives it a, dis a displaced quality. And like a lot of films that do that, like Amulet recently did that as well. Which uh, I don't mind in this which, regard. No, it, like the gas station attendant, and that scene reminded me a lot of High Tension, um, who's, I assume was like homosexual, the black guy that's learning Chinese. Learning Chinese. And, yeah, that was a really interesting scene. There are lots of interesting, I was really struck by the, the she, she's credited as the huntress, but, and also not listed on IMDb or any of the press the grandma. material. The, yeah, the grandma, who's not really old enough to be a grandma, no. uh, I don't think, but I looked her up. Uh, Simon, Simone Milk's, Milk's doctor, uh, I thought was very striking and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to see more of her and you know how some characters just have that effect on you like I felt like disturbed that she was killed the way she was yeah uh, like it bothered me um, um, well so more quirky things when the handsome one and his accomplice are driving with Eve in the trunk the handsome one is a creep and a weirdo mm -hmm. and at one point tells his accomplice kiss me Yes. It, it, Do you love me? Then kiss me. And of course, the accomplice is like, are you for real? And he's for real. And right when he's about to kiss him, that's when they strike the animal on the road and flip the car. I think that it's supposed to be a statement, um, like he, this, the hatred of women, misogyny, obviously, but also as a mask for like his latent homosexuality, because that is the same dynamic he attempts to immediately to throw the grandson into. It's just this this younger uh, accomplice of like raping and harming women, but using it as a way to be sexual, a ruse to be sexual with one another. Right. Um, and also, of course, obviously, the juxtaposition of um, nature versus uh, civilization, and nature is where that come to the aid of women, whereas any time we're introduced to anything in, in civilization is when Eve is kind of at a disadvantage, such as when she's chasing him through the woods towards the end and they run into a thicket of paint maulers. 
Yes. Like in that, that works against her. As soon as they're in this development community, anything man-made works against her. Uh, but anything that represents nature works for her. And in that, the end sequence when she strangles him, you get, um, you see the, the trees uh, reflected on the wall of the room. Mm. Uh, more weirdness uh, when the grandma skins the rabbit. Yeah. That was pretty cool. It's, it's quite visceral. Also, when at one point the handsome one vomits up a frog. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that so was super weird. There are some supernatural elements, uh, but but I, I, I'm glad that it doesn't overtly depend on them. No, it doesn't. My last note is I think the vibe of this film, which worked really well for me, should have been the vibe of that sequel to I Spit on Your Grave. Mm hmm. I spit, which we I spit on your grave deja vu. Oh my god. AKA which we watched we watched both. Did, we didn't review it. We did, but whatever oh, you were recording right. on kept um We recorded a review for I Spit on Your Grave and the sequel, and uh there were some technical difficulties and it's lost in heaven. But um But I did review it for us. But I Spit on Your Grave, the sequel is one of the worst films I've seen. Yeah, it was very and the tone was so off, and I think the tone of um uh, hunted would have worked really well for that film. Yeah, but yeah, I did really enjoy this movie. Uh, I think the French have a, a very good uh, handle on making these sort of films, these kind of weird, perverse genre films. The Belgians as well. Um, it, it is very I spit in your gravy, uh, and it. <laughs> I spit on your gravy. <laughs> it is. But it, it, at the same time, all of that is very familiar. Um, you kind That's going to be a chapter in my book. I spit on your gravy. <laughs> there you go. Along with Froggy Nitwit. But, Frog or Half Wit. Froggy Half Wit. Um, Eve, played by Lucy DeBay, I, I think you had a problem with her kind of being so feral towards the end, but I think that also was uh, working with the motif of uh, aligning uh, femininity with nature. It made sense to me. Um, and then uh, Ari Werthalter uh, as the handsome stranger, I thought was very effective, mm -hmm. albeit in a characterization that I, I would have liked to see a little more of, because um, he's kind of a cipher, really. Like, the, the, he's a superficial character. Um, you can see him in Lucas Don't's uh, controversial film, Girl, um, from two years ago. Is he a rapist in that one? No, it's a oh. it's a movie uh, won awards out of uh, in a certain regard a can uh, about a trans woman played by a cis man that everybody was very up in arms about. But past looking past that, it's trying very hard to be a very um, sincere portrait of that. What else you got? I don't know. That's not it. What would you give this film? I would give it three out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Oh, wow. Anything else? No, that's it. Bye. Bye.